City. Sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. These are their stories. Hey guys, welcome to Munch My Benson. My name is Adam. I'm here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and we have something a little different planned for today. I'm joined on the line by Josh. Josh, why don't you uh, introduce our new segment here? So we're joined by a very special guest today. Before you saw him cashing in on his ice cream man status to gain entry to the homes of his single Ooh. mother targets in uh, season 23 of SVU, uh, one more tale of two victims, which we covered at some point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it'll be linked in the show notes. Today's guest starred as the put upon live action son of an animated He-Man analog in the irreverent sitcom Son of Zorn. And he stole scene after scene playing memorable recurring scuzzballs, dipshits, and doofuses with aplomb in shows like Superstore, Family Tools, Kroll Show, Pickle and Peanut, I Feel Bad, and You're the Worst. Film fans will recognize him from his turns in Weird, The Al Yankovic Story, King Knight, Action Point, Neighbors 2, This Is 40, Jump Streets 21 and 22. Band of Robbers, The Watch, and In the Loop. He's an accomplished stand-up and improv performer, hosts the podcast live to tape on Starburns Audio, and is bringing his solo show, Minnesota Reggae Colostomy Bag, to Chicago on the dates February 14th through 17th. If you're in the area, you should definitely buy tickets. Today's guest is none other than Rochester, Minnesota's own Johnny Pemberton. Johnny, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence today. How are you doing? I'm great. I, th- you need to write my bio for me. That's the best <laughs> I've ever heard it. I think that's, yeah, I've never heard it. so well written and succinct and everything's in there, but it's always doesn't feel, oh, wow. Yeah, I'm doing great now. <laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> so I guess before we dive into things, mm-hmm. uh, let's get some plugs out there for you. So uh, right. like the YouTube crowd who tunes out after three minutes uh, okay. can, can get to your stuff. So are tickets still available for your Chicago dates? Oh, yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure I haven't been checking on them because it's, you know, not something I like to do. But Sure, sure. I hear you. I think there's four shows. So I think there's some there's some tickets left. Yeah, definitely. We'll throw a link to the uh, ticketing site for that's at the Den. At the Den. Yeah, the yeah. Den in Chicago in Wicker Park. Right on. Wicker uh, Park. Yeah, we'll throw some links in there. Um, what can Chicago and I know you're you're putting it up every once in a while in LA. Right. Uh, what can people going to Minnesota Reggae Colostomy Bag expect? Oh, I can expect a um, they can expect to be entertained and educated at the same time. I guess it's just, it's a it's just my solo show, a one man show. I've been working on for a while now, but it's changed. <clears throat> it's grown a lot over the over the years. Okay. Also. I mean, I did it the first time right before the pandemic, like literally like a week before everything started to stop, started, right. started stopping. Sure. But um, yeah, it's just a, it's a really fun show. I love doing it because it's a lot, lot different than anything else I've ever done, but it's still, I don't know. That's me saying that though. That's like sort of uh so <clears throat> it's, the tiger still has its stripes, but it's, uh, sure, sure. it's doing a different dance. Yeah. It's still irreverent, but uh, it's, I would assume given what I presume the uh, subject matter to be right. that that it's like a lot more personal. Yeah, very personal. But it's not like yes. uh, it's not like sad personal. It's really, it's the okay. opposite. It, that, yeah. Basically, the whole point of the show is to to be like very very fun and uh, making fun of all kinds of things that were I never really talked about before because it's hard to talk about certain things. But sure. now I found a way to talk about it, and it's really fun to talk about it. Actually, surprisingly, <laughs> I'm surprised <laughs> that, myself. Actually, that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any upcoming stand updates on the docket? Uh, I think I'm nothing, nothing big I can think of right now. Just you know, I'm always doing spots and stuff around LA, and I do I open for uh, Duncan Trussell a lot on the road, yeah. and so nice. I'll probably be with him pretty soon. I think maybe in St. Louis, but you know, that's uh, yeah. Where can listeners find everything, Johnny Pemberton? You just gotta Google me. You just gotta <laughs> just type in my name and yeah. see what comes up. Sometimes uh, but, it might be a fake account, but it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok. Sure. Your website's pretty comprehensive, too. Yeah, johnnypemberton.dog. Yeah. So, it's release date's just coming up in a couple months, but uh, you're on a pretty big Amazon show that the audience will be able to find you in. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. What was it like working on something that big? Is that the biggest thing you've been on? 
I don't know. I mean, maybe like as far as a te- as far as a television show, but I mean, it's not really a television show. It's more like right. like eight little movies because they're it's yeah, an hour long show. Jonathan Nolan, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and, and Lisa Joy. Uh, I think Lisa was only there in like maybe a writing component, but it's okay. mainly it's mainly Jonah. Yeah. We call him Jonah. Yeah, right, I think right. He, Jonah Nolan and um and uh, the showrunners are uh, Geneva Dwarfs Robinson and Graham Wagner, and they're they're you know alums from all kinds of crazy good stuff. <clears throat> yeah, it was it was I don't know it was a really crazy experience. We traveled. Um, it's it's one of the few things I've worked on where I almost can't can't say anything about it because it's so sure. secretive. Right. But this like, is Fallout about to, we're talking about. Yeah, like, Fallout. I, I, I've neglected yeah. to mention the name of the show. Very secretive. <laughs> nice. But yeah. we traveled extensively for the show, mm-hmm. like uh, around the world, essentially. Wow. And uh, just for to shoot some stuff that looks to lot to me like some place that's not that sure. place. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was absolutely it was really. Very cool, and it's like a kind of thing where I'm ex- ex- excited to see it. As I think uh, a lot of fans are, just because it's going to look, I mean, look incredible. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've only seen a little bit of it, and it looks absolutely outstanding. Like some of the sets and stuff. The sets are, oh, Nuts. they're just beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. truly amazing. The trailer looks dope. Like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It it looks really good. So. As you've discussed on a few of your many appearances on Duncan Trussell Family Hour, right? Uh, you man, you've been on that show so much. I mean, obviously yeah, well, you tour with them. <laughs> like, yeah, well, we're like you yeah. know, old friends, some of my yeah, best yeah. friends in, in uh-huh. the world. So, right. um, but uh, you've got a film in post that I'm personally very excited about mm-hmm. from the Butt Boy director Tyler Kornak. Right. What can you share about this? Um, that's so funny. We were just we just had dinner last night and talked about it a nice. bunch because I I haven't. Nice. He's been. He's almost finished editing it. It's it's a uh, it's a movie. It's like a thriller comedy about a guy who's um, a Florida guy, a Florida man. Right on. And he, that's me. I'm the Florida man who is uh, a loser, and he's he's a loner, and he uh, is addicted to painkillers, and he. Uh, it's about him finding a mermaid, but it's not a mermaid like. Like a Daryl Hannah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's a creature. Uh-huh. It is a it is a nasty creature. Right, on. and uh, there's all kinds of stuff that happens there. That's all in the vein of Florida. It's very, it's very right. Florida. It's a very Florida movie. Florida heavy on purpose. Right on. But I think that's I I love it. It's it's one of the coolest things I've ever worked on. As far well, as well, and you're uh, starring in. Yeah, I'm the yeah. lead of the the movie. So. That was a great experience, and I love Tyler so much. He's such a uh, – we're very different people, but he is uh, – his sense of humor is, is really special. And so it's oh, something yeah. that we're – I got to uh, – I mean, that's how we got to know each other because I saw Butt Boy. Which is fucking awesome. It's just so, so unique. And yeah. it also, it's such a, such a small, cheap movie, but it manages to be so great that it's like, wow, if you can do that, man. Yeah, it's a – uh, that, man, that movie's nuts. Everyone should just watch Butt Boy. Don't look at anything up about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even as like as weird as it seems. No, you know? no, it's it's so much more normal than the concept of the movie is. Yeah, it is. It's it's a I I fucking love that movie. Me too. I love it. So I'm very excited. It's is it still called uh, Mermaid? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I, I mean, as far as I know, it's going to be called Mermaid. Yeah, it probably won't be. People won't be able to see it probably for. I'm bet till the fall at the yeah. soonest, maybe. Even then, that's probably pushing it because we have to do everything takes forever. Like the festival circuit takes forever. Then it's right. like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't even know, man. Yeah, and then it's like, does it go straight to digital or does it does it get yeah. a weird weird art house releasers? Yeah. Right. right, that would be the idea. That'd be yeah. the. I think uh, most things now, people end up seeing it, being able to watch it at home, just because sure. uh, it's unless you get like a big theatrical release. Even then. A lot of times people just don't. Right. I see less movies than I used to. Oh, so. I used to go to fifty a year, easy. Mm. Like I'd go to one. Oh, a that's week. great. Wow, that's really cool. But I wish not I'd anymore. Do that. I can't do it anymore. Like yeah, yeah. I I've seen like fucking four movies in the last year in the theater. So I mentioned this back when we covered your SVU episode, but right. you and I happened to have gone to the same elementary school at the same <laughs> that's time. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's so crazy. If if my internet sleuthing's correct, I think you were a year behind me. Are you class of ninety nine? 
Uh, high school, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you were a year behind me. We were both at Bamber Valley at the same time. Bamber Valley, wow. Yeah, That's we were sandwiched. My sister was a year younger. I was a year older. I don't remember anything about elementary school. I like have, I have nothing. fleeting little little snippets yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, we moved around so much. Like, I... I moved to Rochester in third grade and then left after fourth grade. So, like, I I have a very loose memory of anything there. Right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, your dad was at least, what, a second generation doctor or surgeon at Mayo Clinic? Third generation, yeah. Third generation. Jesus Christ. Weird, right? I mean, that's going, like, your great-grandfather has to have been, like, one of the first doctors at Mayo after the Mayo brothers. I think he was in the first round of doctors, maybe? Mm -hmm. And oh, the yeah. Mayo Clinic was started by the Mayo brothers, right? It was right. Will like and William. Charlie. Yep. 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 So obviously this is sort of uh, much of the subject of your one man show, but uh, you right. dealt with a pretty serious illness, ulcerative colitis when you were a yeah. child. Yeah. Without stepping on the solo show that you're touring too oh, much. I, uh, yeah. It's what, mine what, to step on though. So it's okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But don't like, don't feel pressure from us to, to, yeah. to like go too much into it. But what, uh, what was it like growing up with a family kind of entrenched at that institution? That's the lifeblood of Rochester while dealing with a serious illness. I mean, I don't know. I think it's, I wasn't really aware of it because it's, you know, to me, that was normal because I, I sure, didn't know anything didn't else. Know any so only place yeah. I've ever lived. I only ever had one dad. And pretty much all of my friends' parents worked there as well. Yeah. So I, w- I was so used to calling people doctor that I would sometimes call people who were not doctor, like my T ball coach. I would be like, doctor, whatever. He's sure. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not a doctor, Johnny. <laughs> like I, I didn't know. I just figured that's that's the would you, how you address them. Men? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because pretty much everyone in Rochester it works Is there, there. Yeah, especially yeah, back yeah. then. Back then, oh, yeah. I mean, now it's changed. Now it's the city's grown so much. Yeah, but uh, back then it was definitely also my understanding of the world was limited to people my parents worked with, and uh, I went to a pretty small school. So sure, I think yeah. I I don't know. I think as far as the how it was having colitis and also living in in Rochester. Again, I, I just I don't think I I don't think knew I knew. To, yeah, until yeah. I got older. I remember I, the first time I went to a hospital that wasn't the clinic. I was like, this place is not very good. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like, what's wrong? With, like, like, how come this is this way? And it's like, oh, it's because it's just not yeah. the best hospital in the world. In the world. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> you don't have foreign dignitaries. You don't have presidents of other fucking countries coming yes. into this hospital. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, Rochester is very it, – it's a, it's kind of a weird town. There's, like, a lot of money, but there's not, like, a true college. So yeah. So it's kind of quiet. Mm-hmm. Like, downtown, especially, like, when – when I was a kid, even even into the 90s, because we moved back to southern Minnesota, but like over by La Crosse. And when I'd go back to Rochester, like as a like 18 year old or whatever, like downtown seemed dead. Yeah, I think it's because everyone's everyone's a bunch of dorks. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're all, all a bunch they're of all scientists. Doctors. They're yeah, all So they don't party, yeah. really. Yeah. And it's it's strange a town with that money kind of kind of like being that quiet. What was it like growing up there? I mean, I don't, again, it's like the only place I've ever lived. Sure. So okay. I thought, I I just thought it was, um, I think at some age I became aware it was a very insulated place. Like it really it was incredibly safe. Like there's no, there was almost no crime yeah. whatsoever. Right. And it just was very, uh, <clears throat> not very diverse place, I guess. Well, actually, you know what? That's not true, really. I think it's probably more diverse than a lot of other towns of that same size in Minnesota. Yeah. Because you have such an influx. Like I had a lot of. I got a lot of friends who were who were um, Asian, like who were either Vietnamese because yeah. from their parents were refugees, or they were uh, their Mom. parents were um, that, or they were just from. They were uh, one of my good friends. His mom was his dad was Japanese, and mm-hmm. he they grew up in St. Paul. And another friend of mine, his, mom, his parents were Filipino, and they mm-hmm. they moved there to work at the clinic. So sure. yeah. yeah, I knew a lot of people who were I knew a lot of. It wasn't as white yeah. right, as you would think, yeah. Yeah. It's like Thinking ethnically diverse, on. but maybe like socioeconomically not very yeah. diverse. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all still yeah. rich people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's it's, yeah. it's a different thing. I also realized that like the the wealth that comes from that is very different than the kind of wealth that people talk about in terms of like people who accumulate 
money from real estate and stuff sure, like that yeah. because yeah. everyone everyone there a lot of there's a lot of people who uh, you'd meet who just um they like didn't like money was furthest thing from their head because they're mm-hmm. just their head is in science they're so yeah. entrenched and so interested in uh science stuff they're just really like just a bunch of geeks who don't more, more really introspective about, yeah. Yeah, yeah very and introspective like- yeah being the husband of a doctor, like they don't have very much time to spend their money, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like not even like it's like they have it, but they can't do anything with yeah. it really. It's irrelevant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was this famous yep. uh, couple in Rochester when I was a kid. It was a woman who was a plastic surgeon and her husband was a garbage man. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking that was so cool. And I think, I don't know why, but I think some we, at some point we were in their basement and this guy had like the most collection of beer steins i've ever seen in my entire life and it was very clear that like this garbage man is spending the plastic surgeon's money really well oh yeah awesome like way to go guy uh. yeah like hundreds of vintage beer steins i mean the, that's the, beautiful yeah it's good to be interested in things you know mm-hmm. um <laughs> i you i was listening to i think it was the and I'll talk about this more in a second, but I think it was the Octavio Pisano episode of mm-hmm. your show uh, that you did, mm-hmm. um, of your podcast, and uh, you you threw you you like name dropped Apache Mall, and it, it gave me like a weird like oh yeah a, a weird yeah. like uh, tinge of like nostalgia because like you know I used to live on just up just up the hill from Sixteenth Street, but we were like we were poor at the time. Uh, my dad like basically took like. Three and a half years in the middle of my elementary schooling to like go back to school, mm-hmm. and so like he was doing training at Methodist in the Mayo system, mm-hmm. and like job related training, but he was making like thirty k a year and like supporting a family of five on it. So like that's a not, lot of five. not a ton of money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. And so like we were kind of poor, but like we would go to. It was like voluntary though, so like it's not that bad. But, uh, yeah, it was, you know, we basically spent any time we went anywhere. It was just basically Apache mall to the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Like I saw karate kid two there. Um, I remember that. That was a good movie theater. I saw a lot of movies there. Oh yeah. For real. Um, or we'd rent, we'd rent movies from that grocery. Was it a rainbow there? Oh, what was that? Or a festival? Maybe it was the grocery store. Maybe it was a cub. The one by the Apache Mall. Yeah, the one south of the Apache Mall, just across. Okay, 16th yeah, Street. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was um, Econo Foods. I thought it was, it was a, Econo Foods. It was Econo Foods, but then it was yeah. High V, right? Okay, okay, yeah, th- I, that would have happened after I left. I but. loved Econo. That was yeah. the best name. I, know. I like the logo too. I, I do. I actually, that's like a much better logo than pretty much every grocery store logo. That wow, I have yeah. Econo. Man, this is like scratching a part of my sorry, brain sorry, that weird, touched weird nonsense time. weird nonsense we can move on uh no one el- no one who's listening gives a shit about that <laughs> <I'm Econo sorry. laughs> foods. i'm just gonna start talking about the piggly wiggly uh, uh, uh by yeah. myself mm-hmm. okay <laughs> well have fun with that Adam. <laughs> yeah i will uh so as a kid so uh, you graduated from rochester lourdes which was like right. kind of private school in rochester well it's not a private school it's a catholic school it's a difference yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. it no, is not nice I, I couldn't remember what <laughs> <laughs> yeah i couldn't remember what denomination it was i yeah, figured it was catholic but i wasn't 100 percent. well i have a joke that i said that catholic schools are not nice because all the extra money goes to priest legal defense <laughs> oh for real yeah, yeah. yeah. they are not nice schools my friends who went to the catholic school in lacrosse it was the same deal yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not a private. It is technically a private school, but it is not a. It's not a private school. It's just a oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. went to a private school. It was different. It's different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very different. Still a lot of drug use, though. I think. Oh, oh tons. Yeah, yeah tons. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's just school, right? Yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. The, I think the private schools have a pro- they have a lot of problems with that. Oh sure. Yeah. It's well, like, kids have money. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The, the richy riches are uh, yeah. snorting. Mm-hmm. So going from Lourdes, how did you decide on Florida State as a school? I got accepted. Uh, okay. That's why okay. I, I, right. I didn't accept it any place else. Okay, <laughs> literally, works. I also wanted to go to film school really bad, and uh-huh. I tried to go to film school at Florida State. I didn't get in, didn't get accepted to that, which I think was probably a really good thing because uh, as much as the film program there is really great, it's also like it's great if you want to be like a sound designer, if you want to be like mm-hmm. I don't know a gaffer, or you want to do something like that. But it's not very. Everyone I have met from that film school, with a few exceptions, is 
humorless, like literally humorless. Yeah. Um, we used to go to film school parties and like make fun of them and stuff. I would like secretly record them. I don't know. Like I would say Kubrick wrong just to piss them off. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just like troll them with film. Oh, nerd. absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's awesome. But you know, it's it was still a cool spot. Yeah. So you did like Florida State? Yeah, I did. You know, it was just so different than so different than. Uh, than uh, Minnesota. I just wanted to get away from Minnesota. I yeah. think I, I decided I wanted that. And it was it's fun to be in some place that's a lot different. And uh, yeah, different. I don't know. I love I do love Florida. I feel like there's something about it that uh is very attractive in a it, weird sense cuz it's like this place of it's a chaos. Florida is chaos. Oh yeah. Which mm-hmm. is uh it's such a blend of things and people hate it, but it's also I think they're hating the thing that is just it hates itself, so you don't need to hate it. You can just enjoy it, like observe it. Was there anything about doing uh, Mermaid in Florida that like sort of took you back to college? Oh, hell yeah, totally. I mean, just the smell. Just the smells mm-hmm. alone are so unique because it's so humid there. And like yeah. all the – there's like, I don't know what it is, but there's like a smell that yeah. um, Florida has. I think it's other – a lot of places are super humid. They have like – it's the St. Augustine grass mixing yeah. with like – whatever, like oh, live oak trees and just all this stuff. It's so, oh, I love it. I really it's do. It's thick. It's yeah. so, oh my God. It's yeah. so, like you will start, sw- if you, you will sweat almost instantly mm-hmm. if you go on a run yeah. or something like that. Man. I, I used to live in a, in Galveston in Texas, which is like the same thing, just impossibly yeah. humid. And That's sticky. armpit. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I miss it, but, but then I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, now I don't I know. I'm in mean, the opposite climate. It is nice to go to a place for a limited amount of time because you mm-hmm. really just get to have the best of it because you you know you're leaving. Like yeah. I stayed after for about a week after we filmed. I went down to Key West, not Key West, just to the Keys. You didn't even make it to Key West. It's too okay. far. Mm-hmm. But as much as I had went out on a little fishing trip uh, with this, with a charter, mm-hmm. catch anything? Oh my god, it was great. Caught so much stuff. I didn't didn't get to keep nice. anything, but yeah. I was my. Yeah. I'm not a real fisher person at all but i i oh god i loved it it was so fun it's a thrill though when you get something big and yeah yes Mm. something that looks crazy it has crazy colors and stuff like what is this yeah i miss that adam could talk about fishing for a little bit for a long enough time (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm definitely going back there next year and going on a longer fishing trip i think with some friends yeah, it's super fun. Pick a good weather day, though. It's no fun when the, oh, when the seas are Oh, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. We were yeah. out on eight-foot seas uh, at, from Puerto Rico. What? Ranzas, and it was fucking awful. I threw up the entire yeah, time. Visible. I basically dropped yeah. my line in the water for about maybe 10 minutes and then was like, yeah. nope. And yeah, fucking a party just of threw like up. 20 people, we caught two fish. It was, yeah. it was great. It was it's, never, it's not <laughs> worth it if the weather's bad. It, you're just exactly. not going to catch shit. Go fishing from Florida, not from Texas, because yeah. Texas, the, the way the Gulf of Mexico works, it, it makes that those sea periods are shorter, so the waves can be the same height, but in Florida, they're spaced further apart. Oh. This is very nerdy, but you don't want them spaced <laughs> closely together. It sucks. Yeah, the tight period's <laughs> bad. I had yeah. that experience once on a boat where you're, just, mm-hmm. you're slamming because the boat can't recover. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you can be in like 60-foot seas in the South Pacific and not really notice it because right, they're so you're, far they're apart. rolling. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. God. <laughs> Adam so, was a Coast Guard licensed. Uh, I was. I used yeah. to be a boat captain. Yeah. That oh, was, cool. Uh, that was what I did before I became a dad. Uh, it's kind of out. the same thing. You're just a captain <laughs> of a small autonomous yeah. boat. <laughs> yeah, who who pees himself in the middle of the night all the time. Yeah. It's the it's the bilge pump. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for real. It sure is. <laughs> so how did you end up in comedy and acting from FSU uh, after like not getting into the film program? Well, I still studied that stuff when I was in college, but sure. you know, that's just, it's not like that was a, I don't know. They don't, they don't keep in touch. They're not trying to, not, they're not knocking on my door to, right. uh, to right. do any of the alumni stuff for whatever reasons. They're lost. Uh, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I moved to, I just always wanted to do comedy. I wanted okay. to do improv. I, I tried to move to Chicago mm-hmm. back in the day. But I couldn't get a job there. I really needed to have a job to have health insurance because I couldn't sure. risk not yeah. having health insurance because especially of the, then there's no right. Yeah, yeah. It, I'm so, sure it was very hard for you to get health insurance for a long time. Well, I had to, had to pay a significant amount of money when I first moved to LA. I got I think it's called Cobra or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and this was in 2000 
and what was 2005? I think mm-hmm. I was paying, I'm not kidding, I think I was paying over $500 a month. Oh, yeah. yeah. I believe it. And that's yeah. for a, tw- a guy, a single man in his 20s mm-hmm. who is, because uh, I have a pre-existing condition. Yeah. I mean, the health the healthcare system is so incredibly broken. It's the kind of thing where if some crazy vigilante were to to murder the top 50 healthcare executives, mm-hmm. there would be no tears in the in at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's literally theft. You're stealing from people. It's, it's fucking crazy. terrible. I had yeah. a, like I knew a guy who was like division 1 or division like he he was invited to the draft combine. Like super athletic dude. Right. He died at like 25 because he couldn't get insured. He had Wilson's disease and couldn't get insured and basically like his liver just collected copper until he fucking Yeah, there died. you go. Cool. Yeah. yeah, fucking awesome. It's really insane, but yeah, that's why I had I had to I couldn't move to Chicago because I needed to have an actual job to have health yeah. insurance because it's like if you don't have insurance and you something happens, oh, that's you're, forty grand. Yeah, yeah that's it's your like entire a kind of thing. Life. Or maybe yeah. forty grand. You'd be lucky if it's forty yeah. grand. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I ended up, ended up getting a job in L.A. from some friends who, you know, they were a little older than me, mm-hmm. and they a lot of times with some of these places, it's just it's just a, what do you call it a, a daisy chain of employees because you have a super low level jobs. Yeah. 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 The people don't want to have to have to find someone. It's like you got a friend. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. you vouch for them. Okay, mm-hmm. hire them. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. That was so, that at Fox. It was at Fox. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really do I anything. I did my there. research apparently. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, at Fox, you were you, were you just like working at a, as an assistant or? No, I was like working in the web Fox dot com, and this is before you know the internet was much of the thing as it is now. And I was uh, I was doing this thing they called back then viral marketing. Well, okay, I would basically no. go on to message boards and be like, hey, have you guys seen the show Bones? I heard it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, that's um, great. I think it's on at uh, 8, 7 Central. Were like, you really it, having to like pimp yes. Bones on, on nice. forums? Yeah. yeah, 30 or 40 accounts that were set Jesus up before Christ. me. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, no, you're just picking up. It, like, yeah. Are they worried about like inconsistencies with these characters? You couldn't just make your own character? I don't, they're not worried about anything. Yeah, they don't give a shit about anything yeah. at all. Like they're they're paying me. I get. I'm like this is the most is money the I've ever made in my curtain. life. <laughs> but for them, it's I look back on it's like oh they were paying me nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but uh-huh. I didn't give a shit. I had two it's roommates funny. and mm-hmm. and a one bedroom apartment, and I don't. Yeah, I was. Oh my, I'm rolling in it for me yeah, back right. then. Rent was a lot lower too. Oh my God, it was nothing. Ugh. It was nothing at all. I can't even think about it. I fucking moved there in 2015 and we, my wife and I had to live in a fucking studio apartment. It was room. <laughs> yeah, we called it room. <laughs> room? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we, like when we moved there, it was like so fucking expensive to do, yeah. like really to do anything. But like, mm-hmm. I mean, our rent was, we lived in a studio and it was still over $1,000 a month. And we didn't have off street yeah. parking. We were in Thai town. So like we we're on. Oh, that's where I lived. Oh, yeah, we were in Nor- on Normandy in between Hollywood and Sunset. Yeah, I lived off of Hollywood and, uh, what was it, uh, Wilton or something like that? I think yeah, sure, was. sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the uh, that was where one. you lived then? Yeah, right by, uh-huh. the, right by the beer one. Yeah, so we, we were there for like five and a half years, and it was just like, if you're in the industry, you're going from job to job. Right. And never knowing, like, if you're going to yeah. work again. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I mean, I, uh, I, yeah, I definitely experienced that for a while after... Uh, Mm-hmm. After well, I got laid off from Fox, but I got okay. laid off. Remember, like the remember the two thousand eight like crisis oh, thing? Yeah, very well. Because yeah. mm-hmm. that reset everything, and that mm-hmm. reset. Uh, that's when I got laid off. There, I was the first round of layoffs because they realized, like, oh, this person doesn't do anything, and we're paying him. <laughs> <laughs> like that was nice. People liked me there. But <sighs> sure, that's the way you keep to those post jobs. on something awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think at that point I would have been upgraded to being like a website producer, which okay. I don't nice. make websites. Yeah, sure, it was sure. me like talking to a designer. Mm-hmm. They did everything. I just was sort of. Oh. It, it's the it's such a classic case of of I, uh, there's I got laid off for the it was good it was good for everybody that that yeah. happened. Yeah. So how long were you at Fox like after moving to L.A.? 
I think like maybe, well, I moved there for the job. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But I was there for, I don't know, maybe a year and a half, two years. I'm not even sure. I think it couldn't have been more than two years. I'm assuming you were doing like improv on the... Yeah, I started improv when they were you when at UCB, IO or oh UCB, no, UCB when it opened. Fr- okay. Yeah, when it first opened, I was in the fr- took the first round of classes that they had, and uh, I was really into it there. I was really into that. I also started doing stand up around the same time. Okay, there was a wonderful comedian named Peter Sprite, who was dating a f- coworker of mine at the time, and she introduced me to him, and he put me up on one of his shows he had at the Belly Room in the Comedy Store. Mm-hmm. And but before that, we met like twice, and he sat with me for a couple hours, helped me work on my material and stuff in a way that, like, looking the longer I the further I get away from it, the more I'm like, this man is a saint, like a living saint Mm -hmm. (laughs) to do that for me, right? And it was, yeah, it was very meaningful. And it was a thing where I got to, I got to do this set at the comedy store, it was like my third time ever doing stand up, and the first time I ever did it was just. I did it a couple times in college, but like in someone's living room was just a real like, uh, I don't know, uh, just hangout sort of thing, like hipster yeah. hangout. Sure. And that went really well, but also it wasn't really real. But then when I did it at the comedy store, I was so nervous because I had this terrible oh, okay. experience before that. It was mm-hmm. really bad. I bombed like crazy. And bombing then in I had the belly this... room's not fun either. Like... Well, this was, I bombed, oh, it's a crazy story. We, they, we were shooting this web talk show at Fox for to promote the shows. Mm-hmm. It was like a little um, like internalized web talk show to promote different sure. Fox shows. They had some guests on there. You know, they, they had Dana Gould was on there. Okay. Um, this guy, Charlie Finn, who's on a show called Life on a Stick. Mm-hmm. I can't remember who else was on there. And they, you know, it would spend all this time. But, I, I mean, Dana Gould, on. very real, very real yeah. stand-up. Yeah. yeah, very real. Yeah. 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 But this, this was just a little talk show that they had mm-hmm. to promote these shows. And I was like, you know, I'll do a warm-up for this thing that was shooting like in Van Nuys yeah. with a paid audience. Uh-huh. I did this and it was terrible. And I found out from people later, they were like, why would you ever think that was a good idea? <laughs> yeah, that's figure- what I'm thinking as you're talking about this. Like, <laughs> yeah. whoa, There's that's people a bad who audience. <laughs> veteran stand-ups who wouldn't do that. Cause I'm like, I'm not no. going to fucking do that. Brody so, Stevens couldn't have killed in that room. Like, well, I think, yeah. He's the well, only, maybe he only could have. But- only Brody. But even then, <laughs> yeah. he'd, be, he'd be sweating. Yeah, 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 he'd be working it. Yeah, Jeez. so I mean, yeah, but then after when I did the belly room, after that, it was like the greatest experience ever because it was the opposite of that. Yeah, nice. At, at least the the at least the terrible experience was like very low stakes, you know. It for, was in, in I mean, retrospect, but, like in retrospect, in yeah. retrospect. Yeah. But at it the didn't time, feel like I imagine that was like sure, the whole world. No, because yeah, no one would, no one would make mm-hmm. eye contact with me. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Man, that, <laughs> I've since uh, talked to Dana about this, like many, you know, because I see him from yeah. time to time at shows, and I think I've talked to him about that. I always forget that happened, though. Yeah, did he like remember? A, I don't think he did. Uh, I if mean, he, I'm he's seen so many guys bomb that. Yeah, <laughs> and there's no way uh, he wouldn't have like like clocked the situation immediately and been like, "Feel fucking bad for that guy," you know? <laughs> oh yeah, everyone felt bad for me. It was. Yeah. The thing when people feel when people won't make eye contact with you, that's when you know it's bad because you are, you've you've been sullied, you're just yeah. dirty. Uh-huh. <laughs> the shame that you have is so so heavy and so toxic that to look at you would be to like get infected with it. So uh, at UCB, you're in the first classes at that once I opened in LA. Was that right? Was that like? Was Paul Shear teaching then, or no? I think it was been... uh, uh, a lot of people. I think it was uh, who's teaching there was Sean Conroy was my first teacher. I think Donna Fineglass was teaching. Danielle Snyder was teaching. Okay. I think Owen Burke was teaching then. I took a couple. I took a uh, couple classes with Ian Roberts. He was okay. like a fill in. I think also um, Matt Besser was teaching some stuff then too. Okay. Yeah. So after moving to LA, how long did it take for you to sort of like feel secure in your place in the industry? Oh, um, I'm waiting for <laughs> if, that. If you do, yeah. 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 <laughs> if you do, what day is it? I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, security is like a, yeah. it's relative. There's been times when I felt very secure and then there's times when it's like, oh, that security slow, slowly fades away. I would oh, yeah. say that, um, I don't know. I, I think the last time I, the first time I really felt Gosh, I don't know. I never really look at it that way. I think that maybe when I shot the Superstore pilot and then when we shot the Son of Zorn pilot, I sort of felt good about that. Yeah. 
I felt pretty good then. But even then, it was something where I remember waiting around like, oh, son, is one going to get a second season? Is going to get a second season? We're just waiting, waiting, waiting. That took forever too. They ne- like it felt like it yeah. took years for them to announce that it wasn't coming. Back. Right, but that's because there's a, there's a lot of stuff going on behind oh, the sure. scenes that people don't know about. That was yeah. it made it hard for them. They wanted to have a second season. They spent so much money on mm-hmm. on advertising and stuff that they it would make sense to have a second season. I think it was uh, they couldn't say yes because of just how difficult of a show it was to make, especially with the personalities they were dealing with to make it. Okay. Yeah, which is not the actors. We'll, we'll leave it at that. It was, yeah, I mean, it's it's really kind of, it's not that interesting, actually. It's yeah. more yeah. sad than interesting. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've never, I think the whole the whole security thing, I think, is, is, is really an illusion, you know? Oh. Like, you think about, like, someone like Sharon Stone, right? Like, was it mm-hmm. a few years ago, they were like, Sharon Stone doesn't have health care because she didn't work enough in this one year. It's like, we're talking about one of the greatest actresses yeah. mm-hmm. uh, uh-huh. that I've ever seen. Yep, but like how fucking was, good is she in Basic Instinct? And like to have or Casino, yeah, mm-hmm. she's so fucking good. And like, she's scary. It's it's really nuts how quickly like big actors can be like kind of out on their ass. Mm-hmm. Yep, I mean, uh, uh, probably doesn't help that some certain people have some spending habits. Sure, I yeah. I'm just so super conservative with I mm-hmm. I don't spend any money. Like I remember. I love to buy records. Like, I love buying records. And then when I got my first job here in LA, I was like, oh, records are cheap. <laughs> records are not like an expensive hobby. People yeah. like to buy cars. Mm-hmm. People like to buy, right. you know, blow it at houses. the fucking strip yeah. club or houses or mm-hmm. they do stuff like that. I have a incredibly cheap hobby that I thought was expensive. It's not. Right. It's just, right. I'm just a hoarder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It's not the same thing. So, yeah, I don't they know. They do I suck mean, to move, though. Are you they kidding me? It's insane. Lot. It's the most, oh. it is like having <laughs> a bunch of dead bodies, but even then, uh-huh. it's not even that. Uh, like, I, my garage right now is, oof, I have so many records. I think I have over 2,000 records. Oh, that, nice. Fuck, that's got to be a massive pain. I mean, I suppose you pay movers, but yeah. I, I mean, just moved. I'm in a third sort of, floor. I third move the records. Though, I, I won't <laughs> let them move them. I won't oh, let them no, move, move the records. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm know. scared they're going to fuck with them. So I like, yeah. I've always moved them myself. Yeah. I just got to experience that this summer. Yeah. No, I'm third floor and it's terrible. Mm-hmm. No elevator, like moving fucking, moving just crate by crate of records up these fucking stairs. I used yeah. to sell records actually after I left, after I stopped working at Fox, after I got laid off. Okay. That was how I was making money. I was collecting unemployment mm-hmm. and I was sell- I was selling records online and at a flea market every week. Okay. Nice. Were you that, making enough to uh, survive that way? Well, I didn't need hardly anything. So yeah. yeah. I mean, truly That's, didn't need like hardly. Cash. God. Yeah. I could well, live three off and nothing. A, you were still in the one bedroom with two roommates. No, we were. Yeah. We didn't have this loft downtown, but it was. It was a loft that was meant for two people, and it was four mm-hmm. of us living there. Okay, so okay. rent was cheap. It was like, and it was in downtown before downtown got nice and desirable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It yeah. was actually, yeah. I think, about four or five months after we moved there is when the first grocery store opened up. Nice. Sure. Maybe even yeah. longer after that. So it was really, it was definitely uh, downtown not, was a food desert. I'm sure. Oh, hardcore. Yeah. Hardcore. Yeah. It was fun, though. It was it was a fun time back then. It was really fun. I miss it. So it, it, it feels like you've kind of established yourself at this point as like a very specific comedy ringer in TV and film. Sort of like Manzoukas. Obviously, you're not playing the same characters, but like you both definitely have like a, oh, if you need this guy, call, call Johnny. Yeah. So... How long do you feel like it took to get to that point for you? Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's a th- – there's no definite point, I don't think. I think there's okay. not like a point when you're like um, – when uh, uh, I can th- I can remember the first time I got something as an offer that okay. just came out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's like – maybe that's an example of it. I don't know. I think it's um, – because there's so much stuff happening all the time where I'm going out for things that I yeah. think I'm – right for i love right. the project and i don't get it but that's everyone's everyone has that, sure, that sure, sure. Yeah. example i don't know i mean uh i really have no idea because it's so hard for me to to think what about would that first stuff. offer of them the first straight the first straight offer i got that was like what you're talking about was for you're the worst okay okay but that's because i knew the casting director really well my favorite casting director mm-hmm. ever wendy o'brien she She's the she's the greatest, and she gave me my she didn't give me, but you know she did 
anoint me or whatever with my first sure. series regular uh, job back in the day. And I, I don't know. The, so, many of these, so many casting people are just like, they're just the greatest, most warm, mm. wonderful people. Like there's like at least five casting directors I can think of right now who I just, when I see them, we have to stop talking because we want to do the audition. There's That's also right. this group, there's this group of casting uh, ladies, these two women who cast for all kinds of stuff back in the day, like tons and tons of things. They've never cast me in anything. But we get along so well. They'll, we'll, you know, they'll have, they'll bring me in for everything. We'll like, I'll, they'll they work just want to hang out with you for half an hour. Yeah. I, I guess, but also they will help <laughs> me. Because. They'll help me with the audition, like significantly. They'll let me uh-huh. do it over and over again and give me all these notes and stuff. Somehow, I've never been cast in anything of theirs, but I don't know. It's like this thing where I think it's just I just really like I love auditioning. I think it's I think people are wrong to hate it. You're the you're the one that loves auditioning. I'm, I'm not the I'm only joking. one. But I'm joking. I'm joking. I kind of, but it's kind of the it's kind <laughs> of the know, case. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I feel like maybe that you're you're the worst was maybe the first thing where. Uh, I mean, you're great in that. That was hard. Is so hard for me. I had a really hard time on that show because it was I had just finished shooting Action Point mm-hmm. and we shot that in South Africa and it was really crazy shoot because it was like. You know, it was you just, shot that uh, in South Africa. I know it's weird, right? Jeez. It's supposed to be New Jersey South in the Africa summer. Is Jersey, uh- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you save a lot of money when you do that. Uh, sure. <laughs> and the money gets put back into like stuff like sets and things like that. So mm-hmm. they were able to build yeah. this. They were right. able to do stuff there that you couldn't do other places. Well, at least not for the huh. price, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You're the worst. Was the opposite experience of Action Point, and it was just a few months afterwards. Mm-hmm. So I was just really um, struggling to deal with that as a performer because, like, what's his name? The showrunner for um, You're the Worst. Uh, Stephen Falk. Yeah, he's a brilliant writer. He's, like, really yeah. amazing. But he is very persnickety about what he wants. I can absolutely see that. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, rightly so. But I'm. Yeah. that's not who I was then. And oh, so it was just right. really frustrating to be – like God, what am I doing here? You know. I mean, it ended up being great, and you were like, you you were really fucking good as that character. But that that character is like very not likable. Oh, um, really? Cool. <laughs> no, I mean, you, yeah, you're designed. You're, you're you're designed to be that. Like, yeah, exactly. He, he's making he's making uh, Desmond Borges' character do like all of these. Like basically turning him darker and darker and darker. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of like the Rob Lowe character from Bad Influence. Yeah, right? yeah, kind of, it is a kind, kind, it's of, kind of, of Rob yeah. Lowey. Yeah, and it, <laughs> I mean, there's there's like a different because it's a you're the worst take on it, but it is kind of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's a little less '80s, a little less hair gel, probably. I, I mean, it is called that. "You're the Worst," so yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. There's, that's before I was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you were in season four, right? Mm-hmm. Or the last. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I don't. I don't. There's so much stuff. I just once it's done, I don't even. Oh, I haven't God, watched I that either. I haven't. I watched, haven't watched episodes. almost anything I ever worked on. Yeah, yeah. I've watched maybe two things, <laughs> and and that was fucking five and a half years of working in the industry. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, hard to watch. It. I wasn't working in a creative vein though, so that's most of it. Mm-hmm. So. Should we talk about uh, your experience you almost, on I'm SVU? almost there. I have one more question <laughs> that there. I want to knock out. Uh, We're almost there. So uh, in in the in the episode of 195 of Live to Tape uh, with Octavio uh-huh. Pisano, you nice. were you two touched on getting typecast. Are you conscious or making a conscious effort to try to get more dramatic work? Uh, not really. No. Okay. I think typecasting is great. In a way, it's it's really good. People complain about it. I don't know if I was complaining about it on the episode, but I think it is a I, good thing. I think he thing. was more than you he were. He might have been, yeah. You both kind of talked about it. I think he has a different thing, obviously, that's yeah. mm-hmm. driven by something else, I suppose. But um, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm not trying to ever get any dramatic. I don't know. I'm open to it. I'm really open mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. I think it's just I like to, I want to play either bad guys or stupid guys or stupid bad guys. Sure. And if it happens to be in a drama, it's in a drama. Okay. If it happens to be in a comedy, it's in a comedy. Because I don't mm-hmm. think there's there's not a really really big difference between those two. Right. With this with Mermaid, it was that was a huge departure from anything I've ever done, and uh, I'm really interested to see how it comes out because it'll I don't know uh, it, it's it's going to be a comedy, 
but it's just yeah. me playing a character in a comedy that feels more like a dramatic character, yeah. even though it's not. And yeah. same with Fallout. Fallout's going to be Fallout's got humorous elements for mm -hmm. sure, and I'm yeah. a part of some of that humorous element. So I don't I don't know. I definitely like the dramatic stuff. But I don't like the dramatic the tra traditional dramatic stuff. I sure. like the stuff that's like really dark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as an LA based actor, how did your guest spot on SVU come to it? Yeah. Uh, they called me up and asked me if I wanted okay. to do it. <laughs> I was in the desert. I was in the desert up by Lee Vining by Mono Lake uh -huh. camping. And I got a call. I could I had to walk up a hill to take the call. Sure. Like, yeah. Do you want to do this? I'm like, well, I mean, should I? It's like, like, yeah, you should do it. I mean, cause it's NBC. So they knew me. Yeah. Right, really okay. well, and I, there were, we were had we had a spinoff for Superstore in development at the time, okay. or maybe it had just I think it had just been passed on. Okay, which was like very disheartening for me. Like it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with. Yeah, that sucks because I've yeah. yeah Superstore is like a comfort show for me. Like I'll yeah I've watched I mean, every episode like four or five times. People love it. Yeah, it was gonna be a, it was gonna be the Bo and Cheyenne show. You know, it was gonna be like our show. So I think there was maybe in a way. I don't know if it was them throwing me. They don't. No one ever throws anyone a bone, but it's right. like they, they were like, "Hey, you should do this role on a mm -hmm. Law and Order," and it's like, "Okay, I'll do it." As simple as that. And I was, sure. it's like, okay. I remember looking up like, I don't know if I want to play a, a, a rapiste, you know? Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that a little more uh, coming up here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, did they did they have you on a weekly? What's that mean? They're like on a weekly contract. They just put you out for a week, or were you uh, were you just in like doing like a two day, two or three day? I think contract? I was there for a couple weeks because it was over. Okay. I was there for like two and a half weeks. Oh wow! Really? Yeah, because of the way they're block shooting. Sure, sure. But you were only on Holiday. set for oh, not very long. But I think it was I shot three days, maybe, maybe four days. Okay. Because it's four different locations. Yeah. It was also yeah. over a holiday weekend. And so okay. that's just how it was. And it was also a time I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to get out of... Because it was still kind of COVID madness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wanted to just get... It was like back yeah, then when they different. were they were being like, don't do anything. Stay in your hotel room. And I was like, yeah. um, I'm going to Renaissance Festival. I'm not telling anybody. And I did. You're outside. It's, I exactly. Sure. And also I was like, yeah. I just... I'm sorry, but if I get COVID, it's just going to be... Uh, I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like, do you have a, re I'm assuming you don't have a relationship with SVU. Like, I mean, as far as like watching it or anything like that. Um, no, not really. No. I mean, it's yeah. just this most, I don't watch most things. Yeah. And that's one of those two shows where I watched a bunch of it before I shot it just to kind of sure. get the idea. Uh -huh. I'm like, oh, this is definitely a, you know, it's a, it's a different a certain type of thing. It's a very, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. it's got a music to it that is, Yeah. It's specific. So I know you've done a ton of guest spots on shows, right. which surely can't be easy just walking in and having to kind of get going, you know, without anything. But uh, was guesting on SVU a different onset dynamic than you'd experienced? I don't know. I think it's the one of the best, actually. And I okay. was talking to my friend Paul Edelstein about it. He's done a couple guest stars on it. He, he and I did the show together mm -hmm. called I Feel Bad. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. so funny, really cool guy. And he was like, oh, they are super nice to you there because the guest stars are the lifeblood of the show because yeah. everyone who's on that show, who's they're all hyper-intelligent, really great mm -hmm. actors and stuff. But I think it gets a little boring for them there because well, it is a lot of- Some of them have been doing it for 24 years. Yeah, yeah. It's, a little, it's a little boring. It's a little yeah. boring. So when they have a guest star come in, it's like this thing where okay. this is like a new toy to play with. And sure. Everyone was super, I mean, in a way where I was surprised how, um, you know, Carisi and I were talking and um, nice. God, I, I forget everyone's, yeah. na like everyone's yeah, names, yeah. Uh -huh. but you know, Peter Scandavino, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a, what a cool guy. What a truly cool yeah. guy. Same with, um, who was the female detective? Not Marisha, Kelly but uh, oh, Kelly Giddish, yeah, yeah. Oh, also, just so so friendly and fun to work with, and we're they're asking me stuff about like, so you so you do comedy and stuff, huh? And like, you know, this is like between takes. I'm just like, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, uh, like <laughs> like they're interested in stuff, which is so funny to me. And even yeah. I talked to to Ice a little bit, uh -huh. um, but he's you know he's a very you know he's an older guy. Sure, he's mm -hmm. lived ten lives at this point, but he um. He, I struck up a conversation with him one day because 
I, uh, he used to be friends with this guy, Riley Gale, who's a singer of the band Power Trip, who I mm-hmm. became friends with as well. Riley passed in, I think, 2021. Just, you know, maybe 2020. It was fucking, t- ugh. It's very, t- very sad. He overdosed. But I talked to Ice about that, and it was nice to, you know. Yeah. To talk to him about that and just I don't know I was just really surprised how just how incredibly friendly everyone was and Octavio obviously is sure. I lo- love that guy he's just so such an interesting guy and so um yeah I was actually there when he got he found out he got his um got promoted to series regular yeah I, yeah. I was like we were downtown Manhattan I was screaming in the streets like I was so excited. Yeah. I was truly it's such a huge fucking moment because that yeah. show's going to be like that show. You're going to keep getting fucking paid and paid and paid. Oh it's yeah, gonna be for a on, long time. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. gonna. It's like one of the last shows that's going to be on in perpetuity. You know. Yeah, totally. And under the under the old model. Yeah. Yeah, I was very excited for him. So was Scanavino? Did he break? Uh, was when he was not in character? Was he talking as a Coloradan or in his uh, <laughs> Staten Island accent? Oh God, I can't even remember. I think. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't think about that actually. I feel like uh, I just didn't know. I wonder if he can turn it on or t- turn it off and on, or <laughs> if he just has to like stay in Staten Island. Well, speak. I was very surprised that that is not to find that out that he is not because he seems so yeah totally. that guy. He really yes. feels like it. Uh-huh. Yeah, is it as like one take and move on as uh, the show is kind of like at least popularly thought of being? Uh, not quite, not quite. I will say it's definitely a thing where they they know what they want. They really know. They just know. They've been doing it for so long. They know exactly what they want. So, if you just do it how it's written, then mm-hmm. you pretty much got it. You don't have to do. It's just such a well-oiled machine. And when they have someone as a guest star, they're having them on because they know. They already know what they're dealing with. They know like, oh, this is the this is your this is what you do, what you bring to the table, mm-hmm. and so they're writing for you. It seems like that. Yeah. that everything was. More it was easier, not easy, it was more effortless than I had anticipated. Right on. Now, as like a heavily featured guest star, I mean, you're way up on the call sheet for this episode. Mm-hmm. Were you just given your pages or are you given the full script for context? I don't remember. I think okay. I was given the full script. Okay. okay. Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't I remember. I mean, they were offering <laughs> you, ago, so yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't, you can't possibly be expected to remember every detail about every show you're on. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember if you were in a like fully functioning ice cream truck or if it was just a picture vehicle? Oh, it was fully functioning, too nice. fully yeah. functioning. It Hell was a yeah. thing where between takes, there were people who somehow got through security. Uh, sure. I was serving people ice cream a bunch of times. For real. That's it was fantastic. so funny. Oh, that's awesome. I was serving crew members ice cream and stuff. It was really, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. It was very funny. Were your hands all fucked up from the ice cream or was it all like prepackaged yeah. stuff? No, it's... You, it's. You, uh, were you scooping yeah. and... Were you scooping? No, it's, it's the soft serve. Oh, oh sure, okay. sure, sure, sure. So I'm doing yeah. swollen into a yeah. cup. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I can't believe that. That's, yeah. so, that's fantastic. Did they let you keep the uh, the swirly sw- city hat and shirt? Because uh, no. somebody out there is wearing those. You know what? Right I now. may I may have <laughs> snuck out with the hat. I don't think okay. I still have it. Nice. <laughs> so obviously, there's a pretty uh, awful scene in the cold. Oh yeah, uh, the you. darkest of all. Yeah, oh my God, like I, insane. I, rewatching it for like the third time last night. All the tight shots on the three year old indicate that at least Ugh. on set he's not there. While you're no, he's not there. No, yeah, he's not yeah. there at all. <laughs> but but is that the most fucked up thing you've been asked to do? Yeah, like, do you do you have occasion to say if he cries he dies very often no. uh, anymore? <laughs> I usually say it at the bank, you know. But, uh, uh, I you know I don't know I don't think that um that uh, gosh I, you know I don't know I mean the whole thing is they they're so aware of all this stuff they have an intimacy coordinator who yeah, is. Yeah. She was wonderful, very friendly, overly concerned with mm. how everyone feels. Mm. So the the process is mind-numbingly not titillating whatsoever. It's sure. almost yeah. like rig- rigorously just to – yeah, it, it's not – Right, right, right. There's um, no feelings at all. This is on set in Last Hango in Paris or no, something. It doesn't yeah. feel heavy at all, anything. It doesn't mm-hmm. feel – at least not for me, it didn't. It's not like yeah. it's not something I, I enjoy. 
yeah. that kind of sure. stuff. But uh, right. yeah, it was surprisingly simple and and comfortable, and everyone. It seemed like everyone almost surgical. Yeah, almost mm-hmm. surgical. Yeah. So you were, su- you were your character was super helpful with Finn and Velasco when they first interviewed you at the truck. Would you have found it naturally difficult to cooperate with actual cops, or were Ice T and Octavio just that disarming? Oh God, I don't know. I feel like just talking to cops in general is something I always try to avoid. <laughs> I think we all should, I guess. Uh-huh. I don't know. I mean, yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, Travis is was a very – he's a bold person to have talked to those cops the way he did. Mm-hmm. And I definitely – I don't know if I could do that. No way. So Adam and I are like 200 episodes of SVU yeah. into this fucking endeavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of – at this point, it's more like uh, – it's more like a – like performance art project yeah tv reviews <laughs> yeah, <laughs> funny. i do have to say though that this is like this is easily one of the darkest and most particular mo's that uh-huh. we've seen a serial rapist have yeah it is really isn't it yeah yeah raping of a single mother in front of their child is uh uh-huh. dark it's pretty dark yeah how did you put yourself in the shoes of this like wolf in sheep's clothing yeah. Well, I definitely did not put myself in his shoes. Okay, good. Good. Uh, oh, good. I don't know if I, I you didn't if I, go full method. <laughs> no, definitely did not. I don't know. I think it was. Um, I, I I really just. Um, it's not. It's not as dark as it as it seems mm, because okay. for whatever reason, you know, what was cool though was the makeup that that's that was that I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I yeah. look so. How long were you in the chair for that? Oh, yeah. probably maybe two or three hours, maybe. Okay, maybe less. They did it. They made you look real fucked up. I just oh, it was so yeah. good. Like I love that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I love it so much. That kind of stuff, Jesus. I love it. And it's so, so funny because Mike, the makeup artist, I worked with him on Fallout. Okay, right yeah, on. same nice. same guy. So we. So yeah, he's good. So, they flew him to wherever the fuck you were shooting in Fallout. All yeah, the no, world. he was yeah. he was the head of the department for wow. the entire show. Like, okay, he That's was amazing. the he's the guy. Yeah. I suppose uh, he's like a ringer that they bring in when they need something. Like SVU doesn't need makeup like that that often. No, I think he was yeah. he was the guy on the. I don't know exactly the particulars, but he definitely was the person. He worked on that show for a long time. I think okay. he still does. Maybe I don't even know. But um, yeah, wonderful man. But yeah, he, that makeup stuff. So some of that stuff, it's like I don't have to do anything. Like you don't have right. to. Right, the makeup does the acting for you. Yeah, and even then, yeah. that scene, I'm not even saying anything. At right. All. Yeah. yeah. So. But it is, I will say it is, um, you know, I think it is about it is playing a character like that. It's not so much about getting into the character as it is guarding yourself from the character. Sure. And I, I think, I don't know, maybe because it wasn't, it wasn't that long of a shoot or was spread out over a long enough time to where I didn't feel like, I, no one treated me like that character, you know? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah, they. I mean, they've been doing this so long that I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's just something where I didn't feel like I got stained by it at all, which can happen. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. it, it wasn't. It wasn't like a, a experience where I'm having to to get, to find this because I think that's that's why the character is so nefarious is because he seems like he's he mm-hmm. couldn't possibly do that. Right. Right. And right. so if that's the case, then you're not really trying to to get into this character because the character the, is putting up a front the whole time. Yeah. yeah or yeah. it just doesn't seem like this is the person. And that's what makes it so, so devilish is that mm-hmm. it's like, it seems like a guy who the ice cream guy is doing this, you know? Right. Right. Um, the, so the, the scene with a gun in the park, uh, mm-hmm. seemed to have yeah. like a lot of moving pieces. I, I know they had a stunt guy for when Pisano was meant to have tackled you. Right. And I'm assuming when you're coming out of the truck, it's a stunt guy too. Cause there's a cutaway. No, it's it me. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it's me. Yeah. So he's kind of roughing you up when you're when you're back on your feet. How was shooting like that whole sequence? It's yeah. awesome. It was great. I love it. You know, because Octavia yeah. and I have become friends at that point. Sure, sure. And I was like, you know, just give it to me, man. It's fine. <laughs> like he just, no one got no one got hurt or anything. Oh yeah. But it's it's a matter of just selling it. I love doing physical stuff. I really mm-hmm. I've always loved it a lot, and I feel like it's a thing where. Uh, if it's really comfortable, then it's not going to look that good. Right. And everyone, 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 people are always like, are you okay? Are you comfortable? Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to lie a little bit because 
Yeah, I'm I'm be more comfortable being uncomfortable having this thing look good than I would mm. be being comfortable right. and having, having this like look shoes. bad. Yeah. Exactly. And so, yeah. and that's that's fine. I think that's part of it. You have to have a little bit it's like you can't mm-hmm. if you're heavy breathing long enough, you are gonna get tired even if you're just pretending. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. That was yeah, that was cool. I forgot about that because it was it was pretty physical. <laughs> Being like yes. it was, yeah. jostled around, yeah, you, and stuff. you're really getting like kind of tossed around a little bit. Like yeah. I was selling it too. I was selling. Oh, it sure. Hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it strange playing such a fucked up character and then having the SVU's arrest? Who arrested you? Feel bad about the like you getting fucked up by cops? I don't know. Not. I mean, that wasn't strange. I don't think so. Okay. I feel like, and I think in some ways that like some of those scenes were were all it would be like Pisano and, and Kelly right, Giddish, right, right. so yeah. like together yeah, by, at the at the coffee, yeah. yeah. So you've played a slew of like ne'er do wells and miscreants. Uh, yeah. The shit bubbling under the surface with Max and you're the worst is pretty gnarly in a different way. Mm-hmm. I know this is just a procedural, and you probably shot for you know you you shot for a few days, but in your estimation, have you had to play a character as dark as this? Uh... Probably, yeah. I just can't, I have trouble thinking. I have trouble remem- remembering stuff a lot. Like, I just forget right. everything right. after it happens. I think that um, maybe, I mean, not the darkness of his actions, no. But mm-hmm. I think I've played character. I think the character from Mermaid is, is pretty dark. Okay. okay. And I think the character from Fallout is actually nice, pretty dark. Well, looking yeah. forward to both of those. Then. Yeah. I, I feel like there's <laughs> other so stuff. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the, that's sort of it's such a relative term, and sure. it's also just a thing where, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what fucked me up the most is working on something, but I feel like a lot of times that's not going to be the character, right? Like that's going to yeah. be more of the like working situation. Yeah, but it is the character. It's the character because it's like you having to having to live in a character is right, uh, right, right. Yeah, it's a bad space to be in sometimes i'm sure yeah because you know i feel like for you're the worst i really hated that character so much mm-hmm. that was to honestly that's probably the, the most yeah. uncomfortable i've been on a character i got my hair yeah. the second we, i wrapped on it i called up my barber and i went and got my hair cut yeah like i literally walked from set to the hair sure. to the barber shop to get a haircut so i was like i gotta get this fucking i have to, i feel so bad yeah i hated that character yeah i mean i get it i get it i've <laughs> fucking see the show i yeah. can't not want you to be in that be in that character anymore so gross yeah so you mentioned in the episode of live to tape with octavio pisano that the solution to the problem of trying to be main cast in something to sort of take the reins and make it yourself mm-hmm. um is that some of where minnesota reggae colostomy bag came from yeah uh but more just uh wanting to do wanting to just tell that story because it's something i haven't um sure talked about before but that's you know that's a different thing but yeah you know anything anything is that case i think maybe maybe we were talking more about writing stuff but sure. uh but that you know, that's writing stuff i guess have you been have you been working on yeah okay cool yeah not that i'm assuming if you're working on it you don't want to talk about it because i sure definitely i sure as fuck don't <laughs> you're right you're right you're right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah, yes. like I don't, I don't want to talk about fucking anything that I'm working on writing. Life. Yeah, because it dispels the energy of it. Yeah, yeah. Or unless you do the opposite, of it. some people do the opposite. It works for them. I don't mind talking about it in like a like with someone at using them as sort of a de facto collaborator. But right. like, I don't, I don't want to talk about it like until publicly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you obviously have a penchant for being or for playing big characters. Uh, having listened to you on yours and other podcasts. You're a lot more introspective, and obviously, I think, you know, talking here today, you're a lot more yeah. introspective than the characters you play would ever suggest. I'm sure you're glad for the insane characters that you get to play, but mm-hmm. do you ever feel any frustration for being cast so often in these roles? Like, what What do you mean? Like, what roles exactly? Like, Well, just... I mean, you're always playing, like, a pretty big, you know, Bo, obviously Bo's, like... Bo's, a, yeah, a Bo's very, very big. big character. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, I guess Son of Zorn, you're not playing a big character. You're sort of the, the normal the f- person yeah. in the mix. Um, but, I mean, you're definitely, like, in, uh, in I Feel Bad, you're sort of, uh, you know, a, a weirdo in the peanut gallery. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure everything in Kroll Show. I can't, I can't remember, but you've got to be playing weirdos in that the whole time. I guess so. I don't know. I like, uh, 
What was the question? <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, do, you, do you ever feel frustration from from being cast like so often in that sort of role? Or are you fine? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, those are all pretty different in my mind. I think um, the only frustration I ever would feel, which has gone away because it's not, I'm not being cast in that anymore, also because I really would not say yes to that, is playing their characters like like the the white virgin guy who is sure. – who's, uh, Oh, he, you know, I I call him Virgin Piss Boy. Okay, so sure, sure. I don't do yes. Virgin, Virgin double double Virgin Piss Boy is not mm-hmm. the character I will do anymore right. because it's like I just don't. Or like the guy who's like the white dude who is just so bad. Like he's he has nothing about him that is redeemable. Mm-hmm. Like like a flat villain. Right, right. That to me is is just bad writing too. But um, I don't know. I I I love those. I love playing characters like that. I feel like some of this, the stuff I've worked on the last two years, some of some of the stuff that's not come out is a lot is a big departure from that. Mm-hmm. Okay, not a huge. Oh, departure. I mean, Fallout and Mermaid seem like seem yeah, like they're awesome. definitely you getting to like stretch some more. Yeah, also um, just playing like an older character. So mm-hmm. some of that is also just just age, like playing someone who's not like a. Who's not well, and idiot. you were playing so much younger, yeah. uh, for so long, right? Like, I mean, I think most people would be shocked to know how old you are because of how long you were able to like play yeah. that like young twenty-something character, right? But also, pe- people will say that they'd be like, "Oh, you're that, you're, you know, I'm forty-two. They'd be like, "Oh, you're like, that's crazy, like you were playing a teenager." It's like, yeah, I was playing a teenager. 10 years ago. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> or like, right. I'll see there's friends of mine who will post a picture of me of like, uh, from like a podcast or something. I'm like, you realize that picture is almost 15 years old. Like, I don't look like that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like that is, I mean, dude, pull a picture from Instagram yeah, or something. Yeah. That is the same person. Yes, that is me, uh-huh. but that was yeah, me wearing sure. makeup, like mm-hmm. terrible heavy makeup for a, like a studio portrait gallery shoot. Right. 15 years ago yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's it's not like i'm definitely not that person anymore even though it can maybe kind of seems like it from a from afar sure yeah it's so funny to me that that's some of those pictures are going to haunt me forever i realize that now <laughs> <laughs> i can't get rid of them it's yeah. just part of my life uh so while i was stuck in a van on the lot at universal i'd watch as the superstore casting crew walked around the lot uh mm-hmm. we, working on a show that i you were working on a show that I desperately wish to be working on. You've had a lot of shows that on the surface seem like they'd have been a blast to work on. Uh, what was your favorite thing that you've worked on? Superstore. It so far? By far. Okay, Superstore. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. It's just, the, it was like, I mean, I got to be just to jump in there. Sure. And it was a thing where everyone's so, I mean, everyone's so funny. Yeah. Like everyone is funny on that show. Yeah. Just two of, not to a not to a fall, but like to each person's to is so funny in their own way, mm. and that's like just it's just crazy that's the case, and everyone's so friendly and having such a good time, and all the crew people like know me and stuff, so it's yeah. like this thing where it's such a warm environment that it's uh, everything else since then it feels just like man, it's not like that. Mm-hmm. Nothing is yeah. as good as that ever. So before we let you go, what have you been like filling your head with? What have you been watching, reading, whatever? Uh, Reacher. <laughs> nice. I just I fucking just finished it. It's so fun. <laughs> yeah, it's like there's stuff in that show where uh, some of the performances are just abysmal. Uh-huh. But I'm still watching it. Yeah, I, it's it's that weird like action TV. Uh, yeah, like little like it. it feeds that little like beast you know yeah mm-hmm. it's fun i mean it's like i don't think it's good but it's really fucking fun yeah it's good and it's in a sense it's really yeah good. it's good at delivering the action right. stuff but like as as like uh i don't know how like i know what you mean yeah yeah, yeah. as a as a product sure sure anything you've been reading i know you were talking about tim yeah. o'brien with uh Octavio. yeah i love love him i think i just finished reading Gosh, I forget what I just finished reading, but I'm started reading Dune. Okay, nice. and I because yeah. I want to read it before the next movie comes sure. out, yeah. so I can like get ahead of the curve with some of these characters. Mm-hmm. But man, I just can't believe how good it is. It's like the book. It's such as you know, everyone says it a thousand times, but there's so much in the book because I've seen the movies. I love, I love the movie. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I just love. I think it's it's not so much it's the texture of it and the sound. Of, mm-hmm. That's what I love so much about it. 
But the recent the, one or the David the, Lynch the, one? The, the recent one, yeah. yeah. The Villeneuve yeah. one, yeah. Like, I just yeah. love, I love it so much that it's not even like the movie I'm loving. It's like sort of just the mood of it. I love the mood of yeah. it so much. But I, I, reading the book now, I'm like, I can't believe how much stuff isn't in the movie. Like, there's like a depth to some of these, yeah. like the Atreides, they're not the good guys. They're sort of like the the best of the guys. Yeah, you know what I mean? They're, like, all, they're all shitty. They're all kind of shitty. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're all like have these. I like the Benny Jesuit. They're fucking. They're bad. They're kind of bad. Like these weird. Oh, it's crazy to think that they're all. They're all ski. Everyone's scheming. Mm-hmm. It's so interesting. But they need the spice. The spice must flow. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Johnny. Thank you so much for joining us. It was my Thank pleasure. You for so much time. Yeah, yeah. You should, yeah. Sorry, sorry, we kept you so long. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's rainy day here. Good, nice. good. Has the weather been okay? I'm gonna. I'm oh, it's stuck. wonderful. I'm gonna be out there for, in a week or two. It's week gonna be rainy as hell, probably when you're here. I think. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have to work anyway, so what the fuck ever. But yeah. yeah. What do you care? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, one more time, what do you have coming out soon, and where can the audience? Uh, you can watch Fallout in. The spring on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. I, I'm being in Chicago, February 16th and 17th, doing my solo show, my one one man mm-hmm. show. Otherwise, you know, it's just as it, it'll. You'll know about it if you check me out on on online. If you look at sure. follow me online on my various yeah. online platforms. You'll, your you'll, your you'll Instagram's fun. Your Instagram's really fun. I like to keep it uh, breezy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I don't. Wa- I guess I don't want to ask too much about Wayne, right? Uh, but I, it is. I I find Wayne fascinating. Well, Wayne's got some new videos coming out prior this weekend. Nice, nice. <laughs> okay, nice. Cool. From the uh, from the Indianapolis uh, sewer conference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I saw you. I, I saw you like live streaming from there, yeah. and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Exactly. Uh, but yeah, That's very, what I very too. interested into it. Uh, anyway, uh, so again, thank you so much for joining us, Johnny. Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah.